We need to store values in our programs. These values can change based on the input from the program. Since the values can change, we need a symbol to represent them. And we call that symbol a variable. So what I want to show you in this Java variables tutorial is what are variables in programming and how do you use variables in a Java program? In this lesson, we're going to look at what is a variable and how do we create them? We've done this before, but we've never called it out. We'll also introduce a very important concept that you'll see often in this course, immutability. We'll also look at constants and how they differ from variables and immutable variables. And finally, we'll learn about casting variables to other types. So let's start with what is a variable? We've already seen variables, although we weren't calling them by that name. When we define primitive values, we always use the pattern type, name, and value. The name is a variable in Java. Just like in algebra, the variable is a placeholder for the value. In this case, x is our variable. Just from looking at it, we know x represents 1. If 1 plus x equals 43, we know that x represented 42. You can think of a variable as a mailbox. Pretend a mailbox can hold one piece of mail. Every box has a number. In Java, the mailbox address is called the reference. You'll rarely ever need to know the actual reference value. That's because we give variables a name. You just need to know the name of the variable you create. A variable can be created to hold any primitive. That isn't to say a variable can hold any primitive. When you define the variable with a type, that means for the life of the program, the variable is of that type. So, once created an int is always an int. You can also have variables that hold other references. We'll cover that later when we cover other Java types. Here, we have an integer named i, a double va variable named d, and a Boolean variable named b. So the first part of any variable declaration is the type. In this case, int is the type. The name of the symbol is for the variable. Now, i is not a very good name. You want to give your variables a descriptive name so it's clear what the value represents. Most IDEs will autocomplete your variable names, so you're not saving any typing by using short names. So my i variable here really probably should be something like count of widgets, number of days, or my special number. Just something that's clear and obvious to you. As we saw in previous lessons, you can initialize your variable to a value like this. Now, this is optional. You can provide a value later, but you should never use a variable until you know that you have initialized it. For most cases, a variable will be initialized to zero automatically. In some cases, which we'll cover later, it's an error to use the variable before initializing it. If you know the value when you're creating your variable, go ahead and add it. You can also set a variable to the value of another variable. That looks like this. Another thing to do is, if you know your variable will never change for the life of the variable, you'll want to make it final. It's like the game show, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? When you add the keyword final, you're saying, this is your final value. It's not going to change. When a variable can't change, it's said to be immutable. You'll want to remember that word. It's going to come often come up often in this class. Immutable means the value cannot change once it's set. Normal variables can change as often as you need. So you're probably wondering, where's the value in this example? Well, you can define it like we have already. You can assign it to the value you want when you create the immutable variable. You can also define a final variable and delay the variable assignment to later in the code. In this course, when you see a block like the blue one here, that means then there's a lot more co Java code here, but the exact code, it's not relevant to the discussion. So in this example, we're setting the variable value much later after, def after the definition. Still, you can only set it once. Let's try this in code. We're going to define a variable called hand count. We have two hands. Now look what happens when we try to change the value. We get the error, cannot assign a value to the final variable hand count. Now, we might not know the number of hands in advance, but once we do, it shouldn't change. 
we can modify the code to declare the variable. Then we'll add another dummy variable in between. And now we'll assign two to hand code or hand count. And that works. Now, if I try to change hand code again on the next line, we'll get the error again. You'll want to use final with every variable that you create that you know will not change. This allows Java to make some optimizations and possibly make your application much faster. Sometimes there's a case where you know the variable will never, ever change. Like the constant pi. It's always gonna be 3.1415. It's not gonna change in your program ever. For this, you'll wanna use a constant. Now, it would have been nice if Java used a keyword like const, but they didn't. They reserved the keyword, but it doesn't do anything. Now, to declare a constant, you need to use the keyword static with the keyword final. Static final means constant in Java. Static really means set at compile time, but in this case, think of static final as meaning constant. One thing to note, when you create a static final constant, it must be created outside of a method. It's something we'll go into a little more detail later, but you can't create a constant inside a method. If you know your variable value will never change ever, tell Java it's a constant. The difference between an immutable variable and a constant is, you know the value of a constant at compile time. An immutable variable isn't known until runtime. Now I said earlier, once you give a variable type, you can't change it. That's because Java is a statically typed language. Well, this means the value is typed at compile time. It cannot change, and if you want to treat it as a different type, you have to explicitly tell Java to do so. The opposite of a statically typed is dynamically typed. That means a variable can change type at runtime. An example language would be Perl. The reason Java chose to be statically typed is because you can detect many stupid errors uh, at compile time. And I say stupid because you never want to change the type of a variable. If you change it, that's likely a typo error. There are cases where you want to change the type. For example, you have a short, but you're trying to use it somewhere that expects a long. You can tell Java, hey, pretend this integer is a long using something called casting. When you go from a smaller type to a bigger type, you're making a widening conversion. This always works for the number types. So if you start with a type somewhere in these arrows and move the type to the right, Java's gonna do it without complaint. The other direction is a different story. For example, if you start with a long and then try to put it into a short, it doesn't matter if the number's small enough, Java's gonna give you a compile error. You'll get the lossy conversion error we saw in previous lessons. Going from bigger to smaller is called a narrowing conversion. Let's look at this in code. We'll create a long value and call it meaning of life. We'll assign the value 42. Then we'll create a short called short version and try to give it the value meaning of life. And Java complains, we can't compile. So what do we do? When you know it's okay, you can tell Java, hey man, I know what I'm doing here. We do that with a cast. And to cast a variable, we put the type we want in parentheses. So in this case, we are casting our long to a short. Let's go fix our code. So this won't compile. But if we add cast to short, it works. We're telling Java, we're in control. Now, this also means Java is giving you enough rope to hang yourself. Let's see what happens if we try to put a really big number into a short and we run it and we get a result that really isn't what we wanted. Basically, Java accepted that we knew what we were doing and tried to stuff it in there anyway. It didn't work out. So we get the bits that did fit. There's one other thing to show you. Remember that integer types and floating point types are stored differently. Even though they both fit in the 32 bits, they are represented differently and have different ranges. So if we take a big integer like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, and stuff it into a float, it works. Java won't even protest. So let's print out the difference between the two. The answer should be zero, and we get 46. 
Lesson learned. Be careful when converting between integer and floating point numbers. So that wraps up variables. We've looked at how to define them, how we can make them immutable, and how we can make them a constant. Hey, thanks for watching the video. There's a quick quiz for this on DGU.com if you'd like to gauge how much you learned. If you like the videos you're seeing, please let me know by liking the video and hitting the subscribe button for the DGU channel on YouTube. I'd really appreciate that. If you have concerns or questions, please leave them in the comments below or on DGU.com. There's a poll on the front page of DGU.com, so you can also let me know what topic gets covered next. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.